<clears throat> Be it known that I, Nikola Tesla, a subject of the Emperor of Austria-Hungary, from Smiljan, Laika, border country of Austria-Hungary, and a resident in the county and state of New York, have invented certain new and useful improvements in methods of and apparatus for electric lighting. Well, that's just a fancy way of saying he invented wireless electricity. The text I just read is the opening paragraph on a patent Nikola Tesla filed on April the 25th of 1891. Six years later, he filed another patent adding improvements, then another one in 1900, and another one on January 18th of 1907. These four patents combined form an extensive description of the apparatus Nikola Tesla developed to transmit electricity through great distances without the use of wires, and this device is nowadays known as Tesla coil. A Tesla coil is a resonant transformer capable of generating voltages as high as a million volts, and if you don't live under a rock, you have probably seen videos of Tesla coils creating beautiful arcs of pulsating plasma. By modulating the frequency of the pulsating arcs and using the crackling noise of electricity, it is also possible to use these bolts of plasma to create a synthetic sound. There's many experiments you can do with a Tesla coil, and most of them are truly amazing. But how exactly can a Tesla coil transmit wireless power? One of the most popular experiments you can do with a Tesla coil is use it to light up a fluorescent light bulb without using any wires. This works because the high voltage that creates the sparks is also generating a strong electromagnetic field that accelerates the free electrons on the low pressure gas inside the bulb. The high-speed electrons are able to ionize the gas and excite the phosphorus layer, that in turn emits visible light. Unfortunately, this is a near-field effect, which means it follows the inverse squared law and also means it loses most of its power over a short distance. Nikola Tesla realized this shortly after performing some practical tests with special bulbs that he made. But giving the world wireless energy was his long-life dream, and that meant he couldn't give up just now. His second idea to transmit wireless energy over long distances, using his Tesla coil, is one that seems to be taken out of a Jules Verne story. The first obvious thing about Tesla coils is the fact they produce sparks, jolts of electrons that propagate through the air. If one were to build a transmitting Tesla coil, and then a second receiving Tesla coil, maybe it would be possible to propagate sparks from one coil to the other and thus transmit energy through the air, literally. This is what Nikola Tesla had in mind, and he left it very clear in his patent. A global network of transmitting and receiving Tesla coils that would power the entire world. The problem is that, as Nikola Tesla knew at the time, and we also know now, air is not that good at conducting electricity. Or is it? In normal conditions, air is a very good insulator, and to pass a current through it, over a certain distance, you need to apply a very big voltage between the two poles. This is what is called the breakdown voltage, and in the case of air, is about 3000 volts to cross a 1mm gap. This breakdown voltage can be calculated using the Passion's Law, and if we take a closer look at the equation, we can see that the necessary voltage to cross a certain gap depends heavily on the pressure of the air. Nikola Tesla quickly found out that it's easier to transmit electricity through air when this is a very low pressure and high humidity. And what better place to find these conditions than up there? At 10 kilometers of altitude, right at the edge of the troposphere, is where Nikola Tesla wanted to place the transmitters for his Tesla coils. Unfortunately, even nowadays, the highest building in the world is a mere 800 meters tall. Pathetic. So, how in the world was Nikola Tesla thinking about placing Tesla coils so high up in the sky? Well, with balloons, of course. <laughs> really? The basic idea was to use hot air balloons to carry the transmitters at a very high altitude. These transmitters would ionize the air of the atmosphere and create a plasma channel through which electricity would flow to any point in the world. Now, if your first thought after hearing all of this is that this idea is insane, well, it is insane. It's actually completely mental, but it's also a very interesting one. And don't forget that at some point in your life you have probably seen this kind of energy transmission in the form of a lightning bolt. 
A lightning bolt is a natural occurring electrostatic discharge, and a typical lightning bolt contains about 1 billion volts. They last for only 30 microseconds, but the energy they contain would be able to power a 100 watts light bulb for 3 months. Nikola Tesla expected to be able to generate 25 million volts with this Tesla coil, which when compared with 1 billion volts might not seem a lot, but it is. To achieve such a high voltages, the Tesla coil uses the effect of resonance. Two inductor capacitor circuits are designed to work at compatible frequencies that oscillate with each other. This creates a very strong magnifying effect that spikes the voltages on the secondary to absurd values. As a power source it's possible to use alternating current, but in its original design Nikola Tesla actually used DC current that it would interrupt at very high frequency using a spark gap interrupter. Now the reason why I'm telling you this in a tub while this voice is a dub and this bub is giving a rub to a shrub is because I'm forming a small club and I'm waiting for you to become my sub. A spark gap interrupter, or SGI as I like to call it, works by using the air breakdown voltage to paste the interruptions. This kind of interrupter was actually used in early versions of the radio Marconi invented. <coughs> no he <it> didn't! <coughs> As the power source charges the capacitor, the voltage starts to rise. Once it reaches the breakdown voltage of the air for that specific gap distance, a spark jumps and rushes through the primary coil. This creates a magnetic field which by the Faraday's law induces a great voltage on the secondary and thus plasma is born. This cycle repeats itself several times per second and the sparks we see coming out of the secondary are actually not continuous but a pulsated stream of lightning bolt, which actually makes the Tesla coil the electrical equivalent of a pulse jet engine. Now, if after hearing all of this you're feeling an increasing urge to get a Tesla coil, then I have to tell you that I do too. Maybe I should call Jay from Plasma Channel and ask him to build me one. So oh, hi there. there. Everything, Everything good? good? So, so I'm calling, calling because I need a favor. favor. Can, Can you 3D print me a part for a Tesla coil? Oh, you're building a Tesla coil. Yeah, that's a little cool. baby one. Uh, can you send me some drawings so I can 3D model the parts? Yeah, I can whip something up for you. Should be headed your way. Yeah, Jay, I think you sent me the wrong file. This is just a piece of paper <laughs> saying Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, <laughs> Beetlejuice. Got you. What? Antigza? Antigza? Oh, perfect. Ah, that's great. Thanks, man. Actually, I was calling because I need... Uh, uh, I don't know. You're kind of asking a lot. I, I gotta go. Bye. But, but... Uh... Well, I guess I'll have to build one myself. Okay, for starters, I need to 3D model the structure for the Tesla coil. Let's make it small, but wide enough so I can fit all the electronics. I'll print the supports for the coils in resin. The surface needs to be smooth so it's easier to coil the wire. For the rest, I can use the FDM printers. Okay, let's do this. Future Joel that's editing this video. Make sure you use the badass song for the 3D printing montage.
So far I've printed all the structural parts and I have coiled both the primary and the secondary coils. Now I need some electronics. As we have seen in the beginning of the video, Tesla used the spark gap as a way to interrupt the current on his primary coil. This is an ingenious way of making the circuit oscillate, but nowadays there's an easier way of doing it, using a little invention that revolutionized technology forever, also known as transistor. A transistor is an electric switch without moving parts and is a perfect substitute for the spark gap interrupter. Because the transistor depends heavily on the current flowing in both the primary and the secondary, the circuit auto-regulates itself and matches the frequencies of both coils. This is called the Slayer Exciter Circuit, or SAC for short, and you can find a big variety of SACs online. I'm a big fan of Electro Boom, and I know he has a lot of experience when it comes to SAC. In fact, he didn't believe in SACs at first, but now he's a big fan of SACs. He actually improved the Slayer Exciter Circuit, so I went to his webpage and I stole it. Sorry, Matty. The circuit uses a MOSFET transistor and a driver to interrupt the current passing on the primary efficiently and at high speed. I got the parts and I assembled the circuit on a breadboard. It works perfectly. If you follow this channel, you probably know that I suck at soldering, and I avoid doing it as much as I can. Nonetheless, one should always try to improve ourselves, and what better way of doing that than learning new skills? To do that, one can use the service provided by this video's sponsor. Skillsware Skillsware is an online learning community with over 15,000 courses to choose from. With new courses being added every day, you can learn any subject you want. For example, electronics. Hi everybody, my name is Jay and I teach an award-winning course on electronics called Finding Your Spark. And I so happen to hear that you just might need some help with electronics. Okay, head, so listen up. Today we're going to learn the difference between capacitors and f***ing inductors. So strap your sorry asses down, because today we're going to learn some shit. Uh, if you don't like electronics, you can learn other stuff, like cooking. Hello, my name is Intagza, and this is my kitchen. And I have a little question for you. Do you have an interest in learning how to cook? Because if you do, nobody gives a shit. Pick a goddamn knife and start cutting some onions. Do something useful for a change, you little anxious pieces of Life is not a movie! You millennials have no skills and no knowledge! I should know! I'm one as well! Do you even know what's the most important ingredient in a sauce? What? Did you just say tomatoes? No! Tomatoes are for losers! Disgusting! So, if you're a curious mind and you want to learn about electronics And you want to learn how to cook Just buy the f***ing course! Skillsware! If you like it, just f*** off! Yeah, I think I can learn how to solder some other time The best way for me to avoid soldering is by using a PCB Which stands for Printed Circuit Board I found a site called GLC PCB That not only builds the printed boards very cheaply But also inserts the components so I don't have to solder. I designed the board and I placed the order. I used express shipping, so the PCB should be arriving at any moment. Just a second. Oh, hi there! Hi, my name is Broncos. Can you sign here, please? Yeah, sure. Is I on vacation? Yeah, I got married. Is any morning on China? Well, that was a bad idea. What, going to China? No, getting married. Well, now that I have everything that I need, uh, the only thing missing is assembling the coil. As a top load, I'm using a doorknob that I stole from my brother George. And ta-da! The Tesla coil is ready, and it's looking pretty cool. It's able to turn on light bulbs, but it's not able to produce spark, so I guess I'll have to build a more powerful one in the future. 
In the meantime, I can use the one Jay from Plasma Channel sent me. Yeah, he ended up sending me one. He used the taser lighter to make this Tesla coil. If you want to see his build, you can follow this link here. Now, before I end the video, there's something I need to do. So, in my last video, I asked you guys to baptize my new SLA resin 3D printer. And you guys had a lot of ideas. Most of the suggestions were pun-based names. We have Ultraviolent, nice. Slapatron, SLA Patron, I like it. We have Slayer, we have Light Slaver, and Slave. The name that was actually chosen was Resonator. This name was chosen by my patrons at Patreon, because Patron is Spanish for boss, so they make the choices around here. If you want to become my patron, you can use the panel at the end of the video, or use the link in the description. Because I now have a new SLA 3D printer called Elgu Mars, sent to me by Elgu, well, uh, I still need to name her. So if you have any suggestion, please leave it in the comment section below. Well, this is it for today. Thank you for watching the video, and until the next time, bye-bye.